baptism, not water baptism, but how we, through Christ, vicariously die with Him and live through Him. In other words, when Christ passed away, Romans chapter 6 talks about it, that we are buried with Him with baptism into death. When Christ died through faith, when you and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. As far as God is concerned, the way that He looks at us and the way we affiliate our salvation with the death of Christ is that we died in Christ with Him, but whenever Christ was raised, we have been raised to the newness of life. So we associate our life with that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And something happens on the inside of us. There is a regeneration takes place. Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked the question, how can a man be born again? How can a man enter his mother's womb again and be born? And Jesus said, well, you don't understand that that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh. And a man must be born again in his spirit. In other words, when you and I were born, we were born dead. Literally, we were born dead. We were born in sin. What, what the Bible, what scholars and theologians would call original sin. We all were born in sin. For the Bible says in Romans 3 to 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. These little babies that are around here, we look at them and we look at them in the, the eye of innocence. innocence. But one of these days, they're going to grow up, they're going to reach the age of accountability, and sin, that sin nature is going to take over in their lives, and they're going to need salvation, just like every other individual there is. And Christ came and died on the cross for every single person that would believe upon Him as their Savior. Yes. He came and He gave salvation wherever He shed His precious blood on the cross of Calvary. He made a way for you and I to be able to go into glory. He made a way for you. There's so many things that He gave us when He died on Calvary. All the blessings that are mentioned throughout the Bible. The blessings that, that God the Father bestowed upon His Son Jesus Christ. All those blessings are given to you and I through an inheritance that we have because we have believed on what Christ has done for you and I when He died on the cross of Calvary. That's how come I can have faith. That's how come I can have confidence to know that God is going to work things out. There is a tendency in us to get wound up in the flesh sometimes and try to figure our situation out. Try to work it out ourselves. Try to, try to, we, and that's what causes problems in our life. That's what causes anxiety. That's what causes fear. That's what causes uncertainty. That's what causes fights in homes. And that's what causes a, an unsettledness in our spirit is that we begin to lose confidence in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And we begin to try to work things out in the flesh. But God's way says, yes, come to the cross. Believe on me. Sister Claire said it here tonight. She said it perfectly. She said, oh, don't pray, believe. That's what we have to do. We have to have a, a confidence. It's, it's not that we're praying, oh, I hope God will do this. Oh, I hope He'll show up. It's that God is there and He's already provided and He's provided on mine and your behalf and we must believe Him. We must have confidence to know that whatever situation we're in, whatever it is that we're going through, we have the confidence to know that He died on the cross for us and that everything we have is found in Calvary yeah. and we can believe Believe Him no matter what. We know it's going to work out. Amen. More homes would stay together if we would just say, Hey, I'm trusting the Lord in this situation. More job situations would work out if we'd say, Hey, I'm trusting the Lord in this. Some of our health issues that we go through and we're battling all the time, we would work out better if we'd forget about the doctor sometimes and say, Hey, I know the Lord is going to work this thing out. Well, I'm convinced, and they proved that doctors kill more people than guns. Yeah, yeah, that's a They literally do. They, <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. I, I, I noticed in the paper the other day that the, the president or whatever of Piedmont Mountainside down here just passed away this past week. And he wasn't old at all. He was a young man. I don't know what he died of, but I thought, wow. You know, God... Somebody said it's nine in the line. When your number's up, it's your time to go. But I do believe you can shorten your time here on this earth. 
You can shorten your time here on this earth by being disobedient to the Lord. You can shorten this time on this earth by abusing yourself. Abusing your situation. Putting yourself in a place that God would never put you. And yet there's people out there, even Christian folks, that put themselves in predicaments and put themselves in, in situations that God never intended on them ever being. People put themselves under unnecessary stress at times, unnecessary anxiety, unnecessary drama. And the Lord knows I hate drama. I can't stand drama. You just sit still. Drama will come to you. But if you'll forget about drama and say, hey, I trust the Lord. I trust Him. I trust what He did for me when He died on the cross of Calvary because He, he sanctified me at that cross. He made me holy. He cleaned me on the inside. And He loves me. That's whenever we begin to realize just how much the Lord loves us that our confidence and our trust and our salvation will blossom and will grow. When we realize what Christ has given us when He died on the cross of Calvary, the things that we inherited, we will blossom and we will grow and we will understand that we're in His care and that He loves us more than we can ever dream of. He is an unconditional loving Father. He loves you. Just because you make a mistake, He doesn't wipe His hands clean of you and say, I won't have anything else to do with them anymore. No, He's a nurturing, caring Father. And along comes the Holy Spirit and begins to work on our heart and begins to work in us. And, and the cross in our life begins to shine. And we begin to see that God has made a way for us to escape the situation we're in. God has sent the blessing and, and we've got to learn to wait upon Him. We've got to learn to trust in Him. We've got to learn to have the confidence in Him in whatever situation it is that we're going through in life. And He will work it out if we'll just trust Him. We've just got to have confidence in the Lord. And say, hey, He saved me. He'll deliver me. Yes. You know, I, get, I think so much about this all the time. Mike, we don't, we don't have anything that creates memorials in our life of what the Lord has done in our life. Now, some people do. Some people keep a journal. Some people keep a notebook. I used to do that. Whenever I pastored another church, I would keep a notebook. And I'd say, this is what I prayed for, and this is what the Lord did on this day. One of these days... I'm going to read those things. Or maybe if I'm dead and gone, my kids will read them. I don't know. Maybe my grandkids or something. Tristan found one of them. She accidentally snatched it up with her and took it and moved away and got to read it and got the ball and squall it. Sent it back to me. <laughs> but I think it's important to grasp what it is that Jesus has done for you when He died on the cross. Now in the Old Testament, they would take that staff they would take that wooden staff and whoever owned that staff would carve the chronological blessings of God on their lives into that staff so that, so that any member of that family could look at that staff and they would see that, that carving that depicted that trial, that tribulation, that persecution, and then they would see the deliverance of God. And so that that's how come that's how come there was so much trust in the staff in the Old Testament. Was because they looked back at that and it was a written history of what God had done for them. No doubt in my mind, if you were to really seriously sit down every day of your life and keep a record, because God's keeping a record. Yes, and you were to sit down and keep a record of, of the, the troubles and the trials that you've been through in this life, you would see where God had delivered you. And you would see where He had delivered you in different ways and different times by different means. Maybe He sent an angel. Maybe He sent somebody. Maybe He created a situation in your life you didn't understand, you didn't want to go there, you didn't want to do it, but God done it. Amen. And God knows. God knows what you and I have a need of. Yes. He really does. We let fear well up in us so many times because we don't understand that our God loves us and He supplies every single need that we have. Yes, he does. That's how come whenever you get somebody's heart right on the inside and, and they love God, they give God every single thing they got. I mean, they, they just say, yes, 
Lord, it's yours. My time, my energy, my focus, my job, my finances, my wife, my family. God, everything I own belongs to you, God. You just let me borrow this for a little while. But you are the husband over the vineyard. You are the master of this thing. Lord, it's you, oh God. That relieved me a whole lot whenever I figured that out because then I, when I started having problems, I quit saying, Bruce, I got a problem. I say, God, you got a problem. <laughs> I did. I really did. An old preacher helped me out one time talking about an old woman praying over a well. So they was praying over a well down in Mexico that it went dry. This woman was pastoring a church down there. A bunch of them evangelist people had come down there to look at their ministry and everything. And they all gathered around the well real formal, grabbing their Bibles and grabbing their, each other in the hand. And they were going to do this big formal prayer around the well. And the woman pastor walked up and said, God, there it is. What you going to do about it? And then she turned around and she said, let's go have some lunch. <laughs> And by that evening, water was back in the well. You see, that's whenever you say, Lord, I trust what you did on the cross for me, and I'm going to walk away from this situation. I'm going to leave it at the foot of Calvary. I'm going to leave it with you, and I'm just going to trust you, Lord. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to trust you. Amen. If we could see that more in our lives instead of trying to wrestle it and work it and understand that whenever you died with Christ, 